Hi, I'm tonight's entertainment, and I'm here to review Night of Champions. It was quite the pay-per-view, might I tell you. It was better than, well, a lot this year. But the thing is, it was above average. Some people consider this night a very, very good pay-per-view, and I guarantee you they did not disappoint in the areas where they were supposed to deliver. Now, the only disappointments I had were if I was expecting more from a certain match. However, let's start with let's start with the beginning. Okay, Chris Jericho and Big Show versus Ted DiBiase and Cody Rhodes. This was a good starter match, and Big Show as the partner was, you know, that was unseen. But then when I saw Big Show, I thought it made sense because that was Chris Jericho's clue. He said that his partner is evil. Now, if you remember about two rounds ago, when Seth Green was the host, somebody pretended to be Dr. Evil for $100 million. You remember that, right? That was the big show. He pretended to be Dr. Evil. So that's why Jericho said his partner would be evil. That's the impression. Now, for some reason, the big show came out there looking like he stole Jack Swagger's gear. Or Jack Swagger put it in the washing machine, and instead of shrinking it, it grew, so he just threw it to the big show. Very unlike him to look like that, but still. Hey, it was a good little match. Uh, Jericho and the Big Show were the faces of this match at two heels. It was actually pretty good. I'd say three out of five. Three out of five because of the surprise and the fact that they delivered on the surprise. So I'd say the match itself was about 2.5, but the surprise itself was three. Made sense, didn't make sense, then it made sense again. And that's what you want. So I'm going to give this one a 2.5 out of 5. And let's move on. CM Punk pro the CM Punk promo. I have told people for the longest time that CM Punk does have these great mic skills. Just because they did not see his work in ROH does not mean he doesn't have mic skills. And just because when he came into the WWE, all he said was, "I don't smoke, I don't drink. My only addiction is competition. My only drug is fighting." Just because he was clean cut looking and that's all he said and seemed little monotone with it didn't mean he didn't have mic skills. He's just better suited in terms of WWE as a heel. But he's a different kind of heel. He's a heel kind of like, um, he's a heel that has the confidence he's cocky. He's not a cowardly heel. He's just a heel that knows he's better than you and exploits that. And his promo to the children and the adults, which later went against single parenting as well, where he actually went out, out into the crowd and talked about it, must be seen. No one can argue his mic skills after that, but that was an awesome promo. Anyway, I've spent almost four minutes without even getting to the second match, so let's move on. Tommy Dreamer Christian, I got this prediction wrong. I thought they would let Tommy Dreamer retain, you know, I thought they'd let Tommy retain in Philly. They didn't. He won, uh, Christian, you know, I notice when he does that through the legs, leg kick, you know, I think Coffee does a better one, honestly, because Christian's is like, he goes, it's like step one, step two, step three, kick, Coffee's is just one foot motion, step one, and he hits you with it, so I like Coffee's more, but that match will later, um, so Christian, re Christian begins, becomes the new ECW champion, um, what would I like to see them do with this, I like to see him and Tommy go at it one more time, where if Tommy loses, he's going to retire. But I want the match to be Extreme Rules. That will be the match I want to see Tommy Dreamer go out on. Whether he loses or not, which he probably would lose. But him and Christian in an Extreme Rules match for the next pay-per-view. If Tommy loses, he retires. Make that. So, above all, Tommy Dreamer, Christian, 2 out of 5. You know, I'm pretty sure other people say that too. But 2 out of 2. I'll say 2.5 out of 5. It was average but it was slow in some parts i don't mind slow wrestling but you know you expect a little bit and then the the co-match of the night the co-match of the night was um the six-pack challenge coffee kingston versus mvp versus the miz versus carlito versus jack swagger versus the surprise entrant primo 
Apparently, because Big Show was in the competition earlier with the tag team titles, he wasn't in this match. It was wonderful they chose Primo so it could set up a match with them at Carlito. I'm not going to spoil that much if you haven't seen it. Look at the ending. It's great. It's going to set up him. It's going to set up Carlito versus Primo at the probably at SummerSlam. But it was a great match, great ending, great spots. And it wasn't just a spot fest. It was like a spot bunch of people they do their own thing then it made two spots three spots then they just go back to normal it was it was it was a change of pace it wasn't a spot fest it was like a wrestling spot fest if you know what i mean it's pretty it was pretty good though i'm gonna give that one a three i'm gonna give that one a 3.5 out of five because it was very above average what i expected now melina versus michelle mccool this was a great women's match it's one of the best I've seen in a long time. There was a bunch of nice little spots, and Melina just got herself bented and contorted in so many freaking different ways. It was just awesome. McCool retains, which a lot of people aren't going to be, you know, that high on, but eh, you got to give them both their props. They did great. So let's move on. And this is when I knew that Raw was going to be screwed because I saw. Randy Orton versus Triple H versus John Cena as the very next match, which meant that Mickey James and Maurice was going to be the one following. And after watching Melina and M Melina and McCool, I knew Raw, the Raw main event. Now, no matter if Maurice somehow got a lot better, you know, was going to top that. So I felt bad for Mickey James, but let's get on to this match. Randy Orton through Triple H and John Cena. The moment they started double teaming Orton at the beginning and just kicking the crap out of him, I felt like Orton was going to retain. I said, well, they're beating the crap out of him. Makes me think Orton's going to retain. He did, but it was a very good, it was a very good ending. Let's just say that. It was a kind of unexpected ending where they both had him in a finishing, in a finishing um, submission hold. Orton taps out. Ref doesn't know which one to call the victory for. Legacy comes out. Distracts Orton. RKO. He does a sick RKO. He lands the RKO. And Cody Rhodes, that was on John Cena's shoulders, comes crashing down onto John Cena at the same time the RKO hits. You'll have to, you'll have to see it for yourself. Anyway, Orton retains. I'm happy. Neither Triple H nor Cena is the champion. But I know, like I called it, I called that when Orton wins, that Cena would be the one pinned. So him... And Triple H can continue their feud. Whatever. At least until Batista comes back. And then we can do the same thing over and over and over again. Because WWE doesn't want to push any other talent to the main event on Raw. They just like it the way it is. The same three guys fighting each other. Until Batista comes back to the same four guys. At least John Cena took a moment to the mid card facing off against The Miz. So, anyway. Let's move on. Maurice versus Mickey James. Not much to say. Typical Maurice match, you know. You know, she's she came in as a model. She's not meant to be a wrestler. She's been around for, what, two years? So I didn't expect that much out of her. I expected Mickey James to at least try to carry her to a good match, which she tried. But Maurice's style is more of a slow-paced, sort of submission kind of style. Mickey James is kind of a wrestling break-you-down style. So it wasn't going to be, you know, that impressive because neither of them were the kind of people that would do the kind of six spots that would mesh with the other style. Like when Mickey and Trish did it, it was very different. But now it's like, um, you can't put those two styles and expect something exciting, which is why I was wondering why they put it right after each other. I guess they wanted to give the women's match a chance to shine, but it was wrong. Rey Mysterio versus Dolph Ziggler. This match pissed me off. I knew Rey was going to win, but it made me mad because Dolph Ziggler's basically kicking the crap out of Rey for 10 minutes straight. And Rey kicks out of everything and then comes back with two moves and wins. I'm all for this Rey Mysterio underdog stuff, but it was old three years ago. And even three years ago, it was old then. So... Let's move on. Main event, CM Punk versus Jeff Hardy. This match deserves its own video. But I'm going to say I said this match was a 3.75 out of 5. And what it's going to lead to is a potential 5 out of 5 result. And I will tell you why, but it deserves its own video. Let's just say CM Punk did great as a heel. Hardy won. I don't care. Awesome match. I'll cover why in another video. All in all, Night of Champions gets a, what? Gets a 6 out of 10. It was above average. Didn't expect to even get it a 6. But it was good. Anyway, I'm out for the, I'm out for right now. Y'all have a great night. Peace. Later.